So we're right here at the Embedded World 2019. Hi. That's right. Hey, Nicholas, how are you doing? So uh, here you're launching a whole bunch of new stuff. Yes, exactly. We're actually talking again about our IMX8 lineup, but most importantly, this is the first time we publicly talk about our near horizon, our ease of use industrial Linux software platform. So let me show you a little bit back here what it actually means for the customer and what we have in terms of demos for you prepared today. So, so it's uh, over here. easy to use industrial Linux. That's right. So actually what we found out is that if you use your typical Yocto Linux yeah. in an embedded system, it's actually quite tricky. So back here you can see what we try to focus in is uh, the fast time to market, simple update systems, embedded security, built-in security today is actually critical for any embedded or IoT system. Also the real-time capability for industrial application is key. And then last but not least, actually stable integration of testing. So when you actually build and deploy your software, you always want to make sure you first test it before you release it. So with Horizon, we're focusing on all this, and really we make it easy to use for the customer so he can build and deploy his embedded Linux devices. And for example, he can run on this one? So yeah, this is our Apollis IMX8 Quad Max board. So this is the latest, highest end processor from NXP, and Horizon will be supporting this platform together even with all the other IMX6, IMX7 popular modules out there. So this is a ARM Cortex A72? Correct, so what you actually have is you have a dual A72 running at 1.6 gigahertz, a quad A53, that's kind of your medium performance processing at 1.2 gigahertz, and then two additional real-time microprocessor, uh, microcontroller cores, M4 cores, where you could run free RTOS or maybe Ceph run it to actually enable your real-time um, applications or real-time control algorithms. But let's just quickly walk back and let's talk to Walter here. So Walter is uh, one of our engineers, um, and what he will show you here is, well, another key feature of our Horizon is actually the ease of use part and how we bring customers over that traditional Windows or Windows C customers, how can they actually migrate over to, to Linux. So Walter, can you show us here real quick what we have going on? Yeah, here we have Visual Studio, and here we have a Linux device. It's not such a common mix, but it works. Uh, Microsoft has been supporting Linux development since some time inside Visual Studio and what we develop is an additional uh, extension for Visual Studio that basically allows you to develop and to debug code running on top of Horizon inside the container. So here I have Visual Studio, I can just debug my code, I have all the usual Visual Studio goodies so I can see variables, I have code stack, I have all the tools that people are used to use when developing using Visual Studio. But the software is running on a Linux device. And then it's the a very simple application. I'm just flashing an LED, as you can see. It's the Hello World of IoT, you know. And uh, now, if I want to change the LED I'm flashing, I just need to change the pin I'm using. It's pretty easy. I'm going to rebuild my application. I'm going to use a Linux compiler running on Windows inside the container. And it's going to take just a few seconds. And then in 10 seconds more, I can redeploy my application and I can resume debugging the new version. So it's a very fast, very easy development cycle and people that are used to this kind of development like on Windows C probably are going to be familiar with this development. So uh, it's, it's a good idea to use the Visual Studio for making it easy for people who do Windows CE? I, I don't want to start a religious war, so everyone has his own preferences about IDEs. But definitely people that have been working on Windows CE probably like Visual Studio. Visual Studio has been quite a good asset for Microsoft in Embedded for many years. So uh, using Visual Studio also on Linux probably is going to ease the migration uh, to our new platform, Horizon. So how is it for people who did Windows CE to migrate? How, uh, how difficult is it? Or how well, I mean, uh, Walter could speak in, in general about how difficult it is. But most important is that we want to provide people a, an upgrade path, right? We know Windows C will go end of life, is actually announced, and there's really, if you develop a new application, but you like that Windows development environment, that's really um, where, what we suggest to do. But uh, Walter, can you speak about what are the pitfalls or how easy is it really to do it? Yeah, I mean, of course, we are moving from one operating system to a different one, so you have to do changes, probably you have to rework your code base, maybe you can take this as a chance to implement a completely new version starting from scratch. But on the other side, if you keep using the same development tools, at least you are going to smooth down a little bit the learning curve to move to, that is required to move to a different environment. Uh, running uh, something like Zephyr or another 
Yeah, we have solutions that have both Cortex-A and Cortex-M cores, so you can have like Zephyr or FreeRTOS on the M4 core and Linux on the, let's say, big Cortex-A core. Uh, you can also use Xenomai or other hypervisor-based solutions. We support all of this. Uh, Let's go over here really quick and Thanks. talk about the actual architecture of the horizons of Alter. If you come over here, can you uh, maybe show us what, what really is Horizon? How is it built up? I mean, what's the software stack behind it? Yeah, I mean, what you're seeing uh, is actually a pretty standard and maybe a little bit boring Debian desktop using LXDE. Uh, it really looks, for example, at what you have running on the Raspberry Pi. But what's interesting is that this is running inside a container. So from this container, I can do pretty standard operations, like I have lots of tools, I can install new packages, and so on. But when I'm finishing experimenting, I can translate what I did into a Docker file, build a container that is now fully reproducible, and deploy my application inside it. So it's a easy to use environment, but on the other side, we can, use, we can leverage containers to have a more, let's say, modern uh, software uh, deployment solution, and also we can build applications using building blocks, different tools for a different part of the application. Yes. So, a simple update, security, you have all this That's covered. right, so let's talk about another key feature of Horizon, which is OTA, so over-the-air update, over update. As you know, all new devices are connected. The most critical thing of connectivity is to make sure you have no security vulnerabilities, and if you have some, that you can update it. So Jeremiah is over here actually has a, a cool demo um, about our you know our approach of OTA that's built in it's built in into the Horizon core as a feature. So Jeremiah, why don't you go ahead and show us what you have going on? Yeah. So hmm. over here on the screen you can see kind of a preview of our OTA UI. So there's some device management features here. You can see all the devices we've registered, and on top of that, over here on the right, you can see that we've Divided these devices up into two fleets. We've done that based on our policy. Are they all here? Challenge. Yes. So, so all the devices are connected. What yes. is this? So this is just kind of a setup. They're running some UI containers just to show what's going to happen. So it'll probably be more obvious what will happen over here on this side because they have the version number up there. So in the U up in the UI. You can see we can easily initiate an update, either a single device or an entire fleet of devices. So let's do the entire fleet. You can choose the name of the package you want to update, the version you want to update to, and then the fleet you want to update. So obviously a concern when you're updating devices is what happens if power gets cut. So let's go ahead and update these devices. They will pull our backend server until they've realized that an update is available. But what will happen if during this process, we cut the power? So, well, so he got the update and he'll soon get the update. But what would happen to these two that I just cut the power to? In some update frameworks, that's a big no-no. You might have completely bricked your device, put it in some unusable state. But with our system, the worst case scenario that'll happen is these two devices will now fall back on the previous deployment. They'll boot up with the previous deployment, then they will go contact the server again and realize they missed an update. So you can see here, these two are on an old update, these are on the newer update. So now once these have fully booted, they'll be able to try again on the update process. So it's very resilient. So this kind of issue, which is very prevalent in IoT in terms of connectivity and power loss. Do many have this resilient issue in the past? Many other platforms? Well, I guess in general it's a problem. If you have like an embedded device somewhere deployed out in the desert or up in the mountains, you know, sending out an actual service tech guy to recover a device that failed an update is very expensive. So it's absolutely critical that you actually have a resilient, safe, like a very robust update system. We actually use automotive grade, um, an automotive grade system here. Uh, Jeremiah, can you talk a little bit about the yeah. technology behind it? So the security framework that we're using is actually called Uptain. It is an automotive grade security framework for software updates, meaning that if anybody wants to try to hack the system to push their own software instead of ours, they would have to try fairly hard to crack the system. For instance, you could configure the security system 
such that you need 10 signatures to even do an update. And these are offline signatures, meaning you have to steal from actual people in the real world these keys. And by the time you steal enough keys, somebody might have revoked their key realizing it was stolen already. All right. Cool, yeah. That gives cool. you a little bit of an idea of what we have going on, again, with our Horizon platform. It's really an easy to use, industrial date Linux platform. Now let's walk over here, another cool thing, and very popular these days yeah. is AI at the edge. So I actually have Daniel talk about this. Um, hey. It's a really cool hey, a little um, wall of different examples, and we show how we enable AI at the edge technology and all multiple fronts.